The HW Tech Podcast. Hi, my name is Martin. I'm Key Market Manager here at HW. And our today's question is, uh, when does it make sense to combine seated valves with spool type valves? And to answer this question, I have invited Diana. She's our product manager for seated valves at HW. Welcome, Diana. Thank you, Martin. Good to be here. Diana, maybe you can explain first for which application we prefer spool type valves and when we use seated valves. Mm -hmm. I'm the product manager for seated valves, so I start with the advantages of the seated valve technology. Actually, there's one big advantage. It's that seated valves are leakage free. That means we have no loss due to leakage, not in the consumer lines A and B, but also not in the pressure line. Spool type valves instead always have uh, internal leakage due to their design. Uh, and uh, you can avoid to have this internal leak or to have leakage uh, when you add a additional plate with um, releasable check valves, but you can only prevent the leakage in the A and B consumer lines, but never in the pressure line. You have to consider Internal leakage always means loss of energy, means additional heat generation, and that's usually what you want to avoid in a hydraulic system. So if you want to prevent internal leakage, a seated valve is always the better, better option. Um, it even gets more important when you work in an energy efficient on-off mode and even save more energy than seated valve technology is obligatory. And then there's one more thing for uh, seated valves. Seated valves um, can withstand a much higher pressure. They go up to 700 bar, Harvey has in his program, seated valves up to 700 bar. A usual spool valve normally ends at 350 bar, so we double the pressure that is possible. Wow, 700 mm -hmm. bar, quite amazing. Um, so there was a lot of advantages for seated valves. Mm -hmm. Are there any disadvantages of our seated valves? Yeah, we, we would have only uh, seated valves if it was not like this, but um, yeah, sure. There's always also some disadvantages. The main thing is that the design is um, harder to manufacture, so the initial cost for a seated valve uh, is higher. This is not when you look over the lifetime, because then you save energy and uh, you can create more efficient systems. But if you only look at the initial cost, this is usually higher than a spool valve. And there's a second point, also coming from the design, usually spool valves allow a higher flow. The flow is, uh, the volume is okay. much more. So let me sum it up if I, if I got it right. Um, we use seated valve technology to avoid internal leakage the focus on energy efficiency mm -hmm. and we use spool type valves for low cost systems or even higher flow rates. Mm -hmm. But now back to our question, when does it make sense to combine seated valves with spool type valves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, can know. As in the end, you're, you're completely right. The reason to mix it is if you want to use all the advantages um, of both types. So, for example, if you have a system that is supposed to be leakage-free, but there's one function where you need a higher flow, what do you do? You um, do a leakage-free system with seated valves, and just this one function, you replace it with a spool valve. And so you can yeah, you use also this function. This means the system is not leakage-free, completely leakage-free anymore, not 100%, but usually even a system that is running in on-off mode can handle this relatively small leakage in the system. Okay, that makes sense to me. Um, do you have another example for me? Mm -hmm. The other example would be um, the pressure side. Yeah, we said uh, seated valves go for higher, can be used for higher pressures. So maybe you have a system where you have some functions with a very high pressure and some functions that are not really requiring this high pressure. Then you can build up a system where you start with some seated valves for these high pressure functions. You put in a pressure reducing valve, then you continue with spool valves. And like this, you have a system that uh, fulfills the requirements and is cost effective at the same time. 
So I see, but how can we combine these two uh, wealth technologies? Mm, you do this in the wealth banks, actually not so, not so hard. Um, the spool valves very often already come in a industrial or in a, in a standard with a standard flange pattern, the so-called NG6 pattern or also CTOP03. Um, that's very common in the market. And Harvey also offers uh, the seated valves in uh, with a flange with a connection pattern um, with this standard. So if you take, for example, our Rolf or our MBVP valves, they already come with this flange pattern. And even in our BVH valve bank, which is a modular valve bank, you can add a subplate which has, which has this standard um, and you can add any, any type of valve you would like to. So we have several options. Mm -hmm. Let me sum it up. To allow higher flow in some functions, we can add a spool type valve into a valve bank with seated valves. Mm -hmm. And to allow higher pressure for some functions, we can add seated valves into a spool type valve bank. Mm -hmm. So Harvey can do that with NBVP or Rolf and with the system or valve bank BVH. Mm -hmm. Anything yeah, exactly, to add? Exactly, yeah. That's only some of the of the many possibilities that we have at Harvey, but uh, that already covers a lot, yeah. So yeah, thank you Diana for your good explanations and uh, I think that will help our audience to find the best and most cost-effective uh, solutions in our uh, wealth uh, product portfolio. So it was a pleasure to us. Um, thank you for listening. And if you have any comments, remarks or questions or an idea for our next podcast, please send an email to our email address podcast at Thank you for listening. Goodbye.